Can artificial intelligence actually create an Excel application? Today, we're gonna find out with ChatGPT. We're gonna see if it can do every formula, every code, even the design. We're gonna put it to the ultimate test to see if it can do everything on creating an Excel application. And I've got you along for the ride. Hi, this is Randy Austin with Excel for Freelancers. Today, I've got something really special. ChatGPT is an amazing application and software, but can it actually do all the programming for an entire application? We're gonna create a very small contact manager and see if we can have ChatGPT do everything. I cannot wait, let's get started. All right, thanks so much for joining me. I've got a great training, something I don't quite know what I'm going to expect. So we're gonna be on this journey together. Can ChatGPT AI create an entire application, coded, formulas, formatting, features? Let's see if it can do that. We're gonna run the test and I'm gonna do it with you live right here. I do appreciate you joining me today. It's been a great journey with you and it's all because of you. If you have not subscribed yet, go ahead and click that subscription below and don't forget the notification icon bell. I bring these brand new trainings to you each and every Tuesday, so I do appreciate your support. Today we're gonna to be creating a small but little powerful contact application using chat GPT. In fact, chat GPT is going to be doing all the heavy lifting for us. It's going to do all the code, all the formulas. It is going to do everything. In fact, if it gets it wrong, if there are bugs, we're going to ask it to correct it. If there are incorrect formulas or functions or anything like that, I'm going to tell chat GPT that there is an error and it should make the corrections and let's see how it does. It'll be a very interesting trial. So you're on the journey with me together. Thank you always, of course, for your support. I do appreciate that. As I mentioned before, if there are other ways to support us, in fact, if you have not yet, go ahead and pick up the 250 workbook template. That's 250 of my best workbook templates just for one low price. That really helps us out. Also, if you're a freelancer or you're thinking about getting into the freelance, I've got an incredible new 13-hour masterclass that is not related to Excel that will actually help you reach your dreams as a freelancer using my proven nine-step method. I'm gonna take you through every part from the beginning to end of being a successful freelancer so you can enjoy the freedom to work wherever, whenever you want and be in control of your entire income stream. And that is exactly what I have done here and now I'm willing to share that with you through an incredible masterclass. That is the Freelance Academy Masterclass and I hope you'll join us. I'll include the links down below. All right, let's get started on this. We are going to have chat GPT. Let's go ahead and take a look inside and see just what that is. It's very simple looking. If you have not yet signed up, what you can do is you can go to OpenAI. OpenAI is this website here. And you go down here, you can log in here, or you can also click the try here and that'll get you signed up. It may not be available in every single country. I do request that you get a friend to sign up. In fact, that's what I actually had to do. I'm here in Vietnam. It's not available in Vietnam. So I had to have somebody in another country sign me up. They'll need to use their phone number. So it's not available in every country, but it is really amazing. And so basically, once you get signed up, you just have this little prompt. You ask it questions and it'll give you answers. It's all the rage. Everybody's talking about it. So what I want to see if it can actually make us an application. Now, of course, we, as with anything, it's only as good as the information that you give it. So we're going to try to describe it in as much detail. What I want to do is I've just got this general template. I've got no codes, no formulas, no formats, nothing here. All I've got is a field. I want to select the contact. Then I want to have a contact name, contact address, notes, phone number, and email here. I want ChatGPT to tell us what colors to give it, what colors look the same, what formulas. Right? There's going to be a row here. Now, I want the row of the selected contact to show up here. And what do I mean by row? Well, all of our contacts need to be stored on this list. Contact name, address, email, phone, and notes. We need to tell ChatGPT that we've got two sheets, one that's going to store our data, one that's for our contacts, and we wanted to give it a look and feel. And we're going to basically write a story, let ChatGPT know that exactly what we're creating and what we need, and hopefully it'll deliver all that for us. Again, there's the code. There's no, not a single line of code written anywhere in the VBA model. We'll get into that, but there's nothing here yet. We're going to copy and paste everything 
that chat GPT gives us and then we're going to see if it works and if it doesn't we're going to let it know that it's not working and we need to fix it so that's what we're going to do and the reason that we're going to do this in even though obviously I could do this but that's not the point the point is one to see the power of chat GPT and also to see how it can be used as a teaching tool because not only does it give us information it tells us often why it's doing what it's doing why it's said and if it makes errors it will learn and correct itself so I think the future is really incredible hopefully it won't put me out of a job but I do want to see the power of it and it can be used as a teaching tool for all of us so I can learn something as well okay so let's get started here's what we're going to do we're going to tell let me drop this down a little bit so we can see a little bit of the application so that we can see both and we'll use a split screen for this and what I want to do is I want to put in some information on the prompt so here's the prompt what we're going to do is we're going to tell it everything and basically the first thing what I'm going to do is I'm going to tell listen I've got two sheets one contact list and one and this is what I want to create so let's just go ahead and start typing because it's going to be a good amount of typing and you're going to watch me step by step so hopefully you won't get bored of me typing okay so we're going to say I am going to design an excel based application to store my contacts it will consist of two sheets and we'll give it the name that's going to really two sheets one called contacts information so we'll put the information and the other called contact we'll put those in quotes contact list which will store my contact information okay that's it let's just start it out with that and see what it tells us okay it sounds like a great idea here are some steps to help get started with designing your excel based application open the excel file create two sheets by clicking the plus sign well that's kind of nice we've done that already rename the first sheet to contacts the second sheet to contact list in the contact sheet create columns for the following first name last name email address so it's giving us some information okay we've already created that here's what we've created so it's kind of in the contact list so it's got a v lookup function wow it's pretty impressive let it continue until that but i do want to put some additional information it says customize it further as you make okay cool okay so yes thanks in fact just as if we were chatting with someone great thanks i have created five fields and tell it exactly where those fields are what those fields are and where the five fields within and let's go pull up we'll pull up the contact list right here and we'll say within the contact list these are the fields that we have and this is where they're located and this is where lo the contact list i have five columns okay in column a we have contact name column b we have address so exactly as we have it column c is the email remember this is a natural language tool so we can use natural language column and then d we have phone and lastly in column e we have notes okay let's see how we think here are five fields sounds like a good starting point of your contact let's hear some additional tips so it's kind of gives you tips use data validation to show that your contact information is entered consistently for example you can set up a drop down list for the address very nice conditional formatting to highlight the importance pretty important information in your contact list okay so what I'm going to do next is I'm going to tell it where those fields are located in here I want to drop down list in e4 to select the contact on the contact sheet and then I'm going to tell which fields are located and where they're located and then I'm going to ask for some design tips for this as well so we're going to go ahead okay so let's get, use pivot tables to analyze your data use formulas to automatically calculate if your contacts for example you can use count if formula to count the number of contacts that meet certain criteria okay great information within my contact form sheet I want the following a drop drop down list of contact names inside cell e4 which is what we have e4 in e6 will be the contact and this is going to make programming a lot easier because it remembers everything you write previously in let's say e8 e8 we have the address and i'm going to use the same names in e10 we have the notes in h let's see six we have the phone and in h8 we have the email okay so let's say it's great with my contact sheet form so we're telling it exactly what sure here's how you can set up a country with drop down list contain names and corresponding information for the selected contact create a list of contact names somewhere in your workbook which we'll do we can be on a separate sheet or in a specific range so we're going to create a named range for that sell e4 drop down list it says use data validation we're going to do that okay to do this select e4 go to the data tab ribbon 
click on the data validation and choose list we're going to be doing that but it'll create wow it's nice it's even created a formula for us the formula if e4 doesn't e4 this formula checks to see if a contact name has been selected it displays the selected name in e6 if not it leaves a blank okay very nice but i've got a little bit of different ideas for that we won't use vlookup but it's very nice that we do have that great let's just put great that sounds good so basically chat gpt is actually getting ahead of where i want it to be right it's moving a little faster i want to take this a little bit step by step and it's already assuming what i want which is kind of good but we're not there that sounds good first would like to for you to suggest a nice background color and a button color for this application in rgb let's just put rgb because that's going to be helpful okay let's see what it does okay continue let's scroll down okay sure i can set some color up for the background color use light gray or light blue good choice here are some light gray light blue and for the button color use a vibrant green okay nice let's try light blue so we're going to use uh, rgb 173 216 all right we'll take a look at that of course specific shades of color so it's going to give us some nice suggestions here we'll take this one we'll take the light blue and maybe we'll see what this blue looks like for the button color so what i'm going to do is i'm just going to color all of this i'm going to go to the home and then what i'm going to do is go to more colors and then i'm going to go to custom and here's the rgb that we want so i'll pull this chat gpt up and it said light blue 173 216 230 so that's exactly what i'm going to put in here 117 216 and 230 okay yeah that's a nice color 117 is that what i write i don't think i got it right 173 okay that's kind of nice that's a nice color all right there's the blue that it suggested i'll color these fields in white so i'm going to hold down the control just put those in white and then we'll go to white here so that's let's see the button color that it suggested for us okay so it says the button color here 65 105 255 okay so i'm going to take on this here i'm going to hold the control down for these two buttons and let's actually split this screen so we can see both all right okay great so what i'm going to do is go into the shape format i'm going to go into shape fill and i'm going to go into more fill colors here and this is a little bit easier so i don't have to go back and forth and so it suggested 65 and then 105 255 for the blue all right so there we go okay so shape format it's okay it's not critical and then what we'll do is we'll just use the white font here it's fair enough not the best but we'll see it's not that important okay so we got the colors least suggested by and then i want to tell it that i want to have the contact row well, why don't we start with the named range i want to create a dynamic named range for the contact names in our contact list so we're going to ask it that great thanks can you create a formula for a dynamic named range for the contact names in column a called contact name with our first row starting on row three okay so let's ask for the formula for that okay so let's scroll down here use the arrow okay sure here's a formula create a dynamic range contact name in the contact in column a with the first row starting row three. offset contacts a3 that looks pretty good that's kind of a large number but okay let's take a look at that i like that let's call what i'm going to do is i'm going to copy this formula here as soon as it finishes i like the explanation as well so that's nice okay so offset here's our formula we're going to create a name range in it this formula uses the offset function to start in a3 in the context which is the first cell that contains the content if they then counts the number of non-blake cells in column a starting row three to the bottom of the sheet and includes many cells to create a named range go to the formula tab ribbon define name define names and go to contact very nice okay so that's exactly what we're going to do formulas name manager new we'll give it the exact same name that we said which is important to state contact name we're going to paste it right in there we're going to tab out and tab in and i want to make sure that it doesn't say it. so let's take a look at this a3 contact so it got the, the wrong look it got the wrong sheet let's cancel that out so we want it to do so this is for the contact sheet so we don't want it for the contacts great can you adjust the formula to work in the contact list sheet so we want the formula to work in the contact list sheet certainly here's the adjusted formula could have done it in the contact name in the contact 
name the contact list sheet okay perfect now we got the right sheet name maybe i gave it the wrong information easy enough it corrects itself so we're going to copy this this is the correct code go back in here formulas name manager new again contact names okay perfect paste in that click tab out we're going to shift tab in you see the dancing ants around the current names that's going to work for us okay very good i like that we have the contact name it is correct now we've got a correct named range again all you need to do is just tab through the formula here and look at the dancing ants around it to know it's correct that is correct okay so let's take a look now what i want to do is so i want to put a data validation okay inside context sheet cell e4 i would would like to have a drop down list of the contact names okay that's just the data validation you know we know what we're doing but still certainly here's the well, let's go down to the bottom create a drop down list go to the contact sheet data validation here's a step so it gives you every single step go to the data tab go into the data validation click set allow field to list the source field contact name okay that's just what we're going to do data data validation list source equals right the source equals contact underscore name okay so contact name perfect click okay and now we have a drop down list perfect okay i like that now i'm just going to give these a different color because they just want this is going to be a hidden form in fact what i'm going to do this is the column that we're going to be hidden so we're going to call this a little bit differently gray this will be a hidden column and what i want is the contact row when i select a contact here i want the row of that contact to show up here so if i select fred i want that row three to show up there so how do we go to do that well we're going to create a formula for that but we are not chat gp is going to do that okay within the contact sheet i would like a formula to display the row of the selected contact in e4 i could suggest using the index match i think it's going to suggest let's let's let it go and then it's probably going to give me a v lookup and i'm going to ask for index match probably so if there is no match show blank okay i would like a formula display okay let's see what sure you can use match okay match is perfect which is what i want contact list sheet the form you can enter in e6 i don't want to enter that in e6 here's a form you can use in cell e6 no i don't want the formula in that i want to put the formula in a3 did i say that here uh okay i'll tell i'll tell it i will put i will put this formula in a3 of the contacts sheet okay before it gets all crazy okay so if our match here's the formula i like that we can put this formula anywhere notice it's using the entire column on the on the a but i really want to adjust this form this would work but i want to adjust this formula to use the contact name so let's start out i will put this formula in a3 in contact sheet can you use the new named range we created contact name in the formula see how smart this is and it will do it <laughs> so it'll say certainly here's the updated formula use the contact name range instead of the entire column a see that's exactly what i want if error contact name okay so but i wanted to display the row this form is similar let's take a look this won't display the row it's just going to display can you adjust that formula won't show the row let's go ahead and put that formula in that'll show one now i don't want one i want to show the row i'm going to say okay now i would like to display the row that it's on thanks for the formula the formula however i would like the result to display the row that it is in okay let's see so all we're gonna all it's gonna do is probably add two to that so that's exactly what we need contact list okay it's gonna give me this a again all right we can you go with that so however you want to display the row let's see if error match contact list there we go there's the plus two that's what i'm looking for because i want that show the row that it's in perfect okay so i'm going to copy that go back in here paste that in here and i want to show the row okay fred fredder so let's see what it did it started on column a so it's not correct so we're going to say i'm going to say adjust that formula but to use the contact name yes but adjust so adjust exactly adjust the formula not for the entire column 
but just, so this formula that they have, so this without the two would, right? But I really want to use the constant name. So this would display the correct row without the plus two. So what we're asking it to do, you know, instead of this list, I want to use the contact name. So we're trying to get it to do that. But just use the contact uh, name range. Okay, let's see. So that's basically what I want it to do. Certainly, here's the formula using the contact name. So it should use the contact name and add two. So that's exactly what I want. Here's the one that I want. So third time it did take us to get that. Okay, that's that's the formula that I was looking for. So sometimes we have to guide it a little bit if we want it to, to use a formula. But the correct, the answer is the original would have given it, using the entire column A without the plus two would have given us the row. So that would work fine. And it's wrapped around if error so that when it's blank, right, I want it to show nothing. So, so far it is great. It's created the named range, it's created the formula, and that's exactly what I want. Okay, so now we're pretty much ready to write some code. Of course, we're not gonna write anything. It is ChatGPT that's gonna be doing all the code writing for us. Okay, so here's what I wanna do. I wanna go into the VBA, Alt F11 to get you there. I'm gonna create a brand new module, insert module. I'm not gonna write any code. ChatGPT is gonna take care of that for us, but we're gonna put it right here. Okay, so back into ChatGPT. Let's take a look and see what we want. Okay, the first macro is, I need macro that will clear all of the fields on the contacts sheet. Okay, so let's see what it can do. Okay, so taking a look here, it's given a certainly, uh, here's the VBM macro that will clear all the fields on the contact sheet. E4, E6, E8, E10, that looks pretty good. So let's take a list macro, clears the contents of E4 in the sheet. We're also where the contact information is displayed. To use this macro, you can either assign it to a button or a keyboard shortcut or run it from VBA editor by pressing F5 or selecting run from the menu. Very nice. So I'm going to copy this code. I'm going to go up in here. I'm going to paste that in here. And then what we're going to do is I'm going to go back in here and I'm just going to assign the macro. Okay, so in here we've got this button. I've got an icon and a button. I'm just going to put those, align them and group them together. Then I'm going to right click here. I'm going to go to assign the macro and I'm going to put clear contacts and click OK. Okay, we'll just put some tests here to make sure that all the fields are cleared out accordingly. And then we'll click new contact and they're all cleared out. Okay, so our first macro is working very well. Okay, so what we want to do is I want to then create a macro that's actually going to save it. However, basically what I want to do is I want it to look here in the contact row. This should be, I think I updated that to zero. So if the contact row is empty, then I want it to create a brand new contact in the list. If it is, has a row, then I want it to use that row. So basically when a user selects a contact, that want that row displayed. So we need to tell it to do just that. So we'll be very specific with our request. Okay, I would like a macro saves, and let's be specific, a new contact or updates an existing contact based on the row number in A3. If this field is empty, a new contact will be created and assigned. We're being very specific, a new row. I'm trying to help guide it a little bit. Let's see what it does. Okay, continuing on says here, sure, here's a VBA macro that will save a new contact or update an existing contact based. Okay, so worksheet contacts, worksheet is a worksheet. Seems like a little bit, a lot of code here. Row contact equals A3 value. Okay, if row contact was empty, then, but let's see, row contact is long. This is going to create an issue. Row contact is long, right? When you assign that row contact to this and the value is empty, in other words, this is a string. Now, if we were to put this as zero, it would be fine, right? So, but since we've assigned an empty string, zero would be okay too. When we assign that empty string to a long variable, it's going to create an error. So I already know that already. So if I were to copy the code and I paste it in here, that's exactly what I'm gonna do. We're gonna, it's gonna encounter a bug and that's okay. And that's exactly, you know, I wanted to fix it. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna right click this and click assign macro and click save contact, click okay. But all we need to do is tell it if the new contact, right? So new contact here, if we take a look at that, it's created this row contact as a long. 
but it's empty, right? So we can't do that. So row contact is actually three. So we need to make sure that we let it know. When we do new contact, right, there's an empty row. So all we need to do is basically tell it to test range A3. If A3 is empty, then create a brand new row. So that's what we need to do. So let's let it know that there's a bug. This created a bug because let's say row contact is long however a3 is double quotes so let's check to see if range a3 is empty before i'm assigning the variable i'm not sure if i have to guide it that much right so it says i apologize for the oversight uh, it says here's the updated macro that checks if a3 is empty before assigning row so basically what we wanted to do is we want to check to see if this field is empty then we assign it that new row otherwise we use the existing so that's exactly what it's going to do so i like that better so then so it's checking that now remember if we were to assign this zero it would probably work we would check if it's zero but either one work as long as we check it okay so let's go ahead and we're gonna once it finishes generating it's creating the rows contact and then it's kind of a long way of going about the code but you know we're here to make sure it works and then okay row con my context it says update the row in a3 but we don't need to update that row because that's going to delete our formula we don't need to update a3 since this is where our match formula resides let's see it's it figures it out you're right i apologize for the confusion you don't need to update three since that's where a match from loose size yeah that's what i told you okay here's the updated macro that only checks if a3 is empty to determine whether okay so that so we do need to guide it a little bit it's not you know 100 so it's going to check to see if a3 is empty perfect i like that so it's a great learning tool so you both you and chat gpt can learn at the same time so i really like it for that feature otherwise it's assigning the brand new list so it's going to look up row contact kind of a long way to do it but i want to make sure it gets the first available row let's take a look at that code once it finishes generating okay then it's going to basically take each field and it's going to assign whatever variable or whatever value is in there up to the, the row list so that's what we want that so shining this okay so i like that it didn't include that last so it's updated that so what i'm going to do is i'm going to copy that code i'm going to go back into here i'm just going to clear that and then i'm going to paste that code okay so we see it's the first available row contact application e4 contact list name i'm not sure about that match it's unnecessary so what i'd like to do existing code to get the row number match in a3 so a row contact right is already in a3 we don't need to do all of this we don't need to look it up right it's using the match formula based on what's in e4 which is fine but we already have it's unnecessary in other words here it's going to use the match formula to look up whatever we've placed in here for an existing one however it's unnecessary because we already have the row in a3 so what i wanted to do is i want to say use the row in a3 so this is going to need it's pretty good but it does need a lot of guidance but it's learning okay great however for existing contact we can use the row number in a3 as this cell already contains a formula to generate or to extract the row number okay i think that's going to work and then we'll make the update yes you are correct since the match formula in a3 of the context sheet already returns the row number we can use that value instead of calculating it again okay so correct okay we'll run that code again and i'm going to copy it and i'll paste that code in there i just want to train it so it's going to check there so you can see how it learns and gets better as it moves on especially as you move through that so it's kind of like you're both learning together you're both working together so it's it's, it's definitely getting there. i can imagine this is just going to continue to improve and improve so you know kudos to chat gpt for at least getting this far as it's early on you know it's only been out what six months you know as of this date so i can imagine you know within you know a few years how good it's going to be it'll be unstoppable okay so what we're gonna do is we're gonna copy that code we're gonna go back in here again i'm just gonna paste that code right in here instead save the contract that's what we want so i'm going to right click this assign the macro and then click save contact okay so we're gonna add a brand new contact in here lisa uh, smither let's say fredders fred's wife and then we'll put in one two three four five 
Oak Street. And the notes, test notes, phone number here, and then email here, Lisa. Jill just put Lisa. And we'll test that out at gmail.com. Okay, so then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click save contact and we'll take a look inside our contact list and it looks pretty good. Let's take a look at the phone number. All right, I had one too many numbers in the phone number, but that's fine. Let's see if it updates. So what I want to do now is I want this macro for new to place the name inside E4 for new contacts. So let's try that. Or we could do it for existing contacts too. Let's add that to the macro because what I want to do is once it's either updated or generated, I want to do that. Let's place. Okay, so I'm going to ask it to do one more step. The macro works great at for a last step inside the macro let's place the contact name inside e4 because what that's going to do is going to generate did i get that cell right yeah e4 correct so what i want to do is i want to place that directly in e4 so whatever's been saved here in the contact name i want to place it directly in e4 and that's going to generate that contact row so that's the last step that we're going to do. Okay, so let's take a look at regenerating that. Okay, sure, you can add the contact name E4, the value E6, which is the contact name. Here's the updated save contact, cool. Okay, because that's the last thing. We don't need to copy all that code. I just want to copy the last line because that's all it's going to do. And it's going to be right here. So once it gets down, it's going to be the last line of code probably. And the reason we're going to do this for both new and existing, and that means if the existing one has changed, we want to place that changed name also in there. So we want to do that both for existing or new and here it is right here this is the last line of code that i want to just place here we just copy this that's the only thing that changed there okay so we're going to go inside here and then i'm just going to place it right here all right let's take a quick walk through this code the save contact worksheet contact as a worksheet the worksheet contact list as a worksheet so the two worksheets both as worksheet and the row contact as long and we're going to set the worksheets uh, equal to the contacts and the worksheet contact list equal to contact relatively straightforward and simple we're going to check if a3 that's our row that's associated with that contact if it is empty that means it is a new contact we're going to say new contact find the first empty row in the contact list sheet so i like how their code even commented out which is really nice it's going to set that row contact based on the worksheet contact list a rows count up and excel up this is going to get us the last row with a value adding one means the first available row else it's an existing contact existing contact they even commented it out here get the row number from the match formula in a3 really love the commenting style here really nice really clear really straightforward so that row context can be based on that calculated formula in a3 and then it's just a simple uh straightforward five lines now of course if you followed me for any time we would use for anything larger large we'd use data mapping which is a loop where we run from columns one through five and we just loop it out using data mapping however obviously they don't know maybe i'll teach uh, chat gtp about data mapping might not be a bad idea right teach it so basically we're going to take that row in the first column we're going to sign it whatever is in e6 that's a contact it would have been nice if they commented out each one of those values but we can't ask for too much row two is the address that's going to be coming from e8 three and h8 four so it just basically each of those fields into the list and then lastly we are going to just take whatever the contact name whether it's been changed or updated and we're going to put it directly here in e4 that is it for the save so now what we're going to do is when i save that i want that laser fighter so this will generate the contact row so now we know it's an existing perfect okay now all we need to do is run a macro i need another macro that when it's changed here when there's a change to e4 i want to make sure that it loads the contact create a loop if it's a new or an existing but let's give it a try and see what goes on okay so we need one more macro and that is to load the contact so let's just ask and see what it comes up the last macro i need is to load the contacts on change of e4 okay let's just try on change of e4 if a3 is not playing a3 is not empty if a3 is empty let the user know it is an incorrect contact okay and let's see what what is going to come up with okay so you can add a worksheet change that's exactly what i want so what we're going to be doing is we're going to be going into the context we'll let that right and we're going to be adding a worksheet change event i'm not going to do it i will let chat gpt and that's exactly what we want so let's take a look and see what it's generating okay so a worksheet change event by value okay 
and it's going to be based on e4 so if target address is e4 and worksheet does not equal empty perfect i like that okay it's going to load it all it looks like it's going to work okay and here's the code that it's written here and it says this code uh is a change of current cell e4 the values e4 is not empty and the value of a3 is not empty perfect i like that i'm going to copy that code and it's going to tell you to paste it directly in the sheet so we're going to paste it in the worksheet i'm going to paste that right in here so basically we're going to demand the worksheet as contact contact list as a worksheet probably you know it's a lot of unnecessary code but uh my goal is to get it to work not to get fully optimized code and you know i wouldn't program like this but i'm here to see if it works please select a valid contact name i like that this looks pretty good okay and so here's what's going on inside this code on a worksheet change event when the user makes a change we're going to dimension the worksheet contacts as a worksheet contact list as a worksheet and the row contact as long i like how they're consistent with the variables uh, throughout again we're setting the contacts just as we did before in the save both of those sheets if the target address equals four now i would use something like if not intersection e4 i'd use something like that but that's okay they're going to say e4 right meaning the user has made a change to e4 and the worksheet context e4 does not equal empty right so we want to make sure there's a value and we also want to make sure that this is important because when we clear the content we're also clearing e4 so we don't want this code to run when we're actually for new context when we're clearing it out so that's important and we also want to make sure that a3 contains a value if it's empty then we're not going to move forward so these uh, three constraints are very important then we're going to determine the row contact in a3 and then just like we did before that row contact this is going to be the contact name the contact address and we're just simply then taking whatever fields are located in that and placing it in the cells related just like this h6 so all those fields all the contact gets filled they have didn't comment this out else if right the target address equals e4 and the worksheet context does not equal empty and the worksheet value so this is a really nice code so we're saying yes the user did make a change yes that it's not blank however they put in the wrong now we've got a data validation that's going to help us with that but that means that is the wrong contact then message box please select a valid contact name and then what we're going to do is we're going to clear out e4 and that's really nice a nice little code there that clears it out and gives the user another opportunity to enter the correct contact name now let's try to make a change here debbie smith oh that works good lisa fretters it looks like we doubled up on a contact doesn't it so let's take a look contact list here i'm going to delete one just to make sure that we're not doubling up to make sure there's no issues on that code and now checking it out so let's close that and take a look here okay so we're loading debbie smith it looks good and now what if we get something wrong right okay retry cancel that okay so that looks pretty good new contact load the contact wow i'm impressed lisa smith lisa fretters i'm going to add a new contact and double check to make sure that we're going to have the right row okay so let's add jeff edwards we don't need to add all the information in if you want to make sure that it's saving to the right row save that jeff edwards is played let's take a look at the contact list jeff edwards that looks pretty good good job chat gpt very nice i like the way that that looks it has worked we've created a application using chat gpt in no time at all we have save we have new contacts and we have contact load so everything that we have is here if you would like to add some features to this you want to see chat gpt do more than just this i'll probably be doing a lot of that inside our patreon platform so let me know what you would like to see every single week i make an update i have an updated training i also have an updated workbook that's going to show you exactly how you can basically take your ideas whatever your features that you request you want me to fix something or perhaps you want me to focus on something i'm doing that inside our patreon platform for just a few dollars a month it's also a great way to support the channel you get a lot of one-on-one -on -one time i answer all the messages you get a pdf code book for those gold and silver members and a whole lot more so go ahead and join us on patreon i'll include the link down below i would appreciate that thank you so much for this ai generated application let me know what else you want to see because this is really cool and i'm really happy to bring this to you all right thanks so much and we'll see you next week